Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the tenth and the last lecture in the series of ten lectures in the Sociology of Sanitation. In the last lecture, ninth lecture, we devoted our lecture to understand what are those different government policies and programs for the welfare of sanitation and society, we deciphered number of different policies and programs related to that program running in India by different government agencies. Today, this is the tenth lecture. Our lecture will be dedicated to contribution of Sulabh in sanitation and environment issues. So, our tenth lecture is dedicated to Sulabh sanitation movement. Dear learners, Sulab has become the synonymous terms with sanitation. The contribution of Sulab International Social, Sol Social Service Organization is well known throughout the world. It is not like that Sulab is only associated with toilets, but it goes beyond that. In today's lecture, we will discuss what are those things, what contribution is being made by Sulab in the field of sanitation. Let us start with the origin of Sulav. It was founded in 1970 in the Bihar by Padmabhusan Bindeswar Pathak. In Patna, it was established and gradually developed with different uh, other aspects of sanitation related things. And now its headquarters is in Delhi and the organization is known as Sulav International Social Service Organization. Its founder, Bindeswar Pathak, is known for dedicating his life for more than 50 years in the field of sanitation. And when we talk that sanitation, it is not only related to toilets, but it goes beyond that in the field of manual scavenging at the same time untouchability prevalent in the caste and the related factors associated to different part of social change. So, toilet can be an agent of social change also. With the contributions of Sulab Sauchala, we may understand that, that yes, in the field of sanitation, number of things can be done. We will go through different contributions made by Sulab in that particular way so that we can also learn that yes, we can also make contributions in the field of sanitation. If we start with the understanding of the contribution of Sulab, let us begin with the contribution of its founder. Well, we the student of sociology talk about action sociology and its founder Padmhusan Bindeswar Pathak is also known as action sociologist other than the social reformer and other than different tax. We talk about action sociology at the same time we know that for being action sociology we are supposed to have sufficient knowledge of the grass root. So, it is just opposite to being armchair thinker, action sociologist, being action sociologist is not so easy. We learn in sociology the theory of Max Weber. Max Weber talks about interpretative understanding. What is the meaning of the interpretative understanding is that if we want to know the real picture, ground reality, we place ourselves to that position to know the ground reality. Dear learners, unless until we place ourselves at others position, how can we know what is the situation, what is the going on, what is the socio-cultural context in that understanding. 
and in management field it is known as empathetic understanding we try to understand the problems of other Bindeswar Pathak tried to understand the problems of scavengers because he realized that sanitation is not simply related to toilet but it is related to number of people those who are categorized as manual scavengers and as a result they are considered as untouchables so unless until we provide sufficient opportunity for the people those who are associated to it unless until we provide alternative solution to that type of traditional toilet how can we talk about the freedom of the people how can we talk about the social upliftment of the people those who are associated to it that's why as it is shown in the picture that he stayed with the manual scavengers community he did all the jobs done by the manual scavengers or those who so called untouchable caste just to understand just to feel what are their pains how do they do so is it possible for other people also to engage themselves in that particular way so just to feel that he stayed with them and he did all those jobs which are supposed to be done by the manual scavengers and dear learners credit goes to all the efforts made by him and because of that in 1991 he got padma bhushan award for his contributions to the field of sanitation dear learners sanitation is not simply related to cleanliness and toilet but those who are associated to it whether it is related through the caste system it is related to gender aspect it is related to number of other aspects we are supposed to touch upon all these issues so that we can think of making change in the field of sanitation if we talk about sulab then it is clearly said that sulab is envisioned as an agent of social and cultural change inspired by gandhian philosophy of truthfulness non violence and altruism Sulav believes in the Gandhian principle of trusteeship. Sulav is based on compassion for and development of fellow men. Sulav seeks to develop an egalitarian society based on equal opportunity for every human being, irrespective of their caste, race, and natural of a happy home, free from unhygienic and unhealthy practices keeping in mind these principles gandhian philosophy sulav has following objectives in its mind first is to restore human rights and dignity of course as we keep on discussing sanitation is not simply related to particular aspect of cleanliness but if one side it is related to human right because as we all know that even these days right to sanitation and right to water is also part of human right other than that dignity of human life each and every one those who are part of the society being individual they are entitled to lead a happy and healthy life with proper dignity as we all say that we all are human being at the same time we are supposed to remain being human so dignity is essential for each and every member those who are part of human society the next objective of sulab is prevention of environmental pollution and improvement of health hygiene and ecology the third objective of sulab is harness non conventional energy sources from human waste and other wastes and save fuel and forest of course how to convert problem into an opportunity for that we have to learn lesson from the contributions being made by sulav its fourth objective is to procure manure from sulav saucharay and sulav toilet complexes and use it to raise from productivity another promote job oriented education and primary health care dear learners it is not so easy that if we tell someone that don't do that job well 
unless until we are having another alternative that okay that do you are that job you are not supposed to do but there are alternatives so for that education skill building and number of things are required sulab is also engaged in doing that for groups of people from all walks of life throughout the country and abroad to build public opinion against social evils and for the cause of economically poor and neglected sections of the society another create new job opportunities by training change agents for integrated rural development another promote consultancy research and development in technical and social fields another diffusion of innovations education motivation and awareness through communication dear learners this is part of our education this is part of our motivation and of course communication this social of sanitation is part and parcel of that if through social of sanitation we keep on creating awareness among the people this is another aspect of sulab well as we all know that today over 20 million people in india use sulab toilets every day it is not so a small number so if we talk about the toilet facility we keep on talking about stopping open defecation so sulab provides ample opportunity for people to get the facility of sulab toilets so sulab public toilet complex are well known it is spread across the india sulab built its first toilet in 1973 in ara bihar and the first toilet complex in 1974 in patna bihar since then sulab has become synonymous with public toilet and bath complexes nationwide mostly these complexes are built by sulab in slum areas as dear learners we all know that those who are needy they should get the more so in urban area slum people they are facing a lots of problem that's why these toilets are built more in that area of course we are supposed to get equitable sanitation in that field in its 50 years of public services sulab international has worked to achieve equitable sanitation and hygiene for all it has been the forefront of the government's india's flagship program swachh bharat abhiyan that is clean india campaign that we discussed in the ninth lecture of the series on government policies and programs with a focus on ending open defecation it has built over 1.5 million household toilets and has been awarded the gandhi peace prize for 2016 so this is another contribution of sulab international so far as rural sanitation is concerned in the context of rural sanitation sulab has adopted a community based behavioral change approach by creating awareness and demand for sanitation and hygiene it has converted dry latrines into two pit four flush latrines in 1749 towns and built approximately over toilets in most villages sulab has worked with women mainly mothers to achieve total sanitation by making them the agents of change sulab's intervention has had a remarkable outcome in reducing diarrheal disease mortality and morbidity among children of course in rural area as we all know that people they are not that much aware they have that facility number of facilities are not there so sulab is doing wonderful job in rural sanitation also if we talk about urban sanitation in urban area sulab has put thrust on integrated programming so that issues of sanitation water and hygiene are addressed simultaneously 
in 1974, Bindeswar Pathak introduced the concept of pay and use public toilets in India. Since then, over 9000 public toilets have been built across India. Now, Sulab toilets are seen in all major public places, including 36 railway stations, which are used by approximately 20 million people every day. Dear learners, pay and use. These days it is very common, but just imagine it was introduced in 74 for using toilet. You cannot think that, okay, pay and use and other things can be used even for toilet, but it is part of Sulab's work. Well, as we all know that water is another problem of each and every one. Getting sufficient water one part, getting safe water is another part. It is not so easy, dear learners, to get sufficient and even we get the water, it is drinkable or it is pure. Sulav did wonderful job in that field also. Sulav has introduced a pro-poor system to make drinking water affordable at 1 rupee per liter. A process was developed to produce drinking water of appropriate quality from the surface water in arsenic affected areas of West Bengal and Bihar. The objective was to create a decentralized paper friendly approach aimed at empowering communities so that the villagers with training can run the plant effectively. Of course, it is not simply that to establish particular plant, but Sula did the job in training the local people so that they should remain independent and they can start their own thing and they can think that yes, we are attached to that. So that feeling should be there so that they can continue doing that good job. So far as community toilets in slums is concerned, Sulab has built and maintains around 2,500 toilets in slum across major urban areas. Additionally, it runs a concerted vast campaign in around 300 slums. It has trained around 13,000 women in wash related activities in slums of Delhi alone. These women play a pivotal role in raising awareness and driving change. Of course, women play important part in social change. So they are doing wonderful job in this field also. FSM is another part of Sulav. Sulav has 190 biogas plants installed in public toilet complexes in India and five in Kabul, Afghanistan. It is a special system in which human excreta from the Sulav public toilets goes through the biogas digester. When decomposition takes place, it produces biogas which can also be used as manure. In this type of biogas digester, human excreta is fully recycled. Again, even the human excreta can be used for good things and another thing that is another part of Sulav. So far as learning is concerned, of course, we all know that teaching is learning is important parts of every individual. So, toilets in school is also part of Sulav's attraction. Sulav has built around 20,000 toilets blocks covering around 6,000 schools across India. Its school intervention programs are designed to promote girls' right to education and this has resulted in a remarkable improvement in school enrollment and attendance of girls. Dear learners, we keep on talking about the dropout of girl children because of non-availability of toilet facility, because toilet is necessary for both male and female, but it is more related to more needful for girl children because of their physiological aspect. So, Sulav did that wonderful job in this field also. So far as gender in was is concerned, Sulav has always stressed in adopting a gender inclusive approach in its intervention programs 
with a specific focus on girl student. It has set up Sulav Sanitation Club, which is a child-centered and girls-led global movement of children and young people engaged in bringing about positive and social transformation in schools by empowering girls. So far, 174 clubs in 20 states of India, six in Nepal and Bhutan, and one in South Africa have been set up. About 12,300 school children in more than 800 schools have been trained in school sanitation and hygiene education and menstrual hygiene management. Dear learners, this photograph depicts that how in Sulav, the girl children, they are being trained and they are being provided in schools at the same time as part of the skill building. Girls are being trained how to prepare the pads and as vending machine in different schools, these pads, are sanitary pads are being supplied to the needy girls. So this is another aspect of and wonderful job done by Sulav. So far as education in underprivileged is concerned, in 1992, Sulav set up a public school which has provided English medium education to nearly 10,000 students. The school provides free education to children who come from underprivileged and economically weak backgrounds, whilst a nominal fee charged from those who belong to general category. Designed for a school to work transition, children are trained on a number of skill development programs alongside formal education. 100% of the school graduates have been able to find employment to support their families through this education program. As we all know that importance of education is most important in everyone's life. So those who cannot afford or those who are not able to allow to enter the school or those who are detached from the mainstream of the society, if they will get the education, they can do wonders in their lives and society can get the benefit of their contributions also. Dear learners, as we all know that sanitation is closely associated to the problem associated to manual scavengers. We discussed a lot during our dedicated lecture on caste and sanitation. Here, for manual scavengers, Sulav is doing a wonderful job. Sulav International, under the leadership of Bindeswar Pathak, has been campaigning to elevate the plight of manual scavengers since its inception. The success of his specific five-point interventions are prominent in two towns of Alwar and Tonk in Rajasthan, while overall it is estimated to have liberated over two million women on account of the conversion of dry latrines into two-pit water pour flush technology. Dear learners, here I am sharing with you one of the burning example of manual scavenger. Usha Chomer, who is presently the president of Sulav International Social Service Organization. She was doing job of manual scavenger before her marriage and she joined the same thing after marriage because she belongs to particular caste who are supposed to do the job of manual scavengers. But she is burning example that how one can get anything by firm determination and efforts made by any agency. Usha Chomer, who was leading the job of doing the job of manual scavenger after keeping in contact with Sulav, she learned a lot, she was trained in different skills and finally in 2021, she was awarded Padma Sri Award. Dear learners, it is said by that Patricia Collins, renowned feminist, she used the term outsiders within for women, that women, they are part and parcel of society, but as they are not actively participating in household decisions and they are not empowered, so even if they are part and parcel of society, 
they are outside even in the same society. So, Patricia Collins used the term outsiders within for the so, uh, women. The Usha Chomer sees women and she belongs to particular caste who is supposed to be outsiders, but she is burning example that if one is supposed one thinks that yes, I can make a change, so one can do any wonder in one's life. Dear learners, there are number of Usha Chomers waiting for our attention. If we provide them ample opportunity, if we promote them, if we think that yes, you can also be part of our society, you can also be insiders within, then we can get the benefit of number of Usha Chomers, they are there in the society. So, dear learners, Usha Chomer is burning example of manual scavenging at the same time she achieved that height that she got the award like Padma Sri in 2021. We are supposed to get number of Usha Chomers in the society, so that they can be at par with other women in the society also. At the same time, when we think of the problem related to women, problem related to manual scavenging, Sulabh is also dedicated to help the children and senior individual of the society in the same direction, it helps widows of Vrindavan also. In 2012, Sulabh stepped in after on the, at the behest of India's Supreme Court to provide care services for the widows of Vrindavan and Varanasi, who were shunned by their families and were impoverished and neglected. Sulab's intervention transformed the living conditions of the widows, bringing security, solace and joy during their old age. This picture is sufficient to influence any individual. This picture clearly hints that if they will get the opportunity, they will get any chance, they can also lead a happy life. The happiness shown on their face can easily motivate anyone to do something for the widows also. Not only widows, those who are there in the society and if we think that yes, they need our special care, they need our special attention, we should come forward to help such women in that area. Dear learners, you might have visited different areas, you might have heard about different types of museum, but Sulab is having one international museum related to toilets. So, Sulav Museum of Toilet is there in its Delhi campus, rated by Times Magazine as one of the 10 unique museums of the world. The museum traces the history of evolution of toilet system through various civilizations spanning over 4,500 years from ancient to ultra modern facilities from simple chamber pots to elaborate decorated Victorian toilet seats. Visitors see it all. There is even a toilet disguised as a bookcase. Thousands visit the museum every year from around the world. Of course, this toilet museum indicates that well, we are supposed to understand the importance of toilet in our lives also. Toilet is not a matter of shame, it is not a thing of a taboo, it is not like that we cannot discuss about toilet. So, this international museum or the toilet museum helps us understand that yes, toilet can also be discussed, toilet is also part of our discussion. Sanitation is closely related to skill development. If we think of improving the lives of any individual, we are supposed to train them with proper skill, so that they can do anything in their lives. There is a demand to kill, skill up people in the sanitation sector. As a sector that is in the heart of the sustainable development goals, sanitation requires a range of skills from civil and water engineers, masons, planners and communication specialists and grassroots workers. Sulav, as a major sanitation implementing agency, has trained thousands of workers in each district in India, 
and overseas in skills related to sanitation and thus played a pivotal role in the skilling process of workers engaged in the sanitation sector in the last 50 years. Sulav also puts thrust in pursuing locally resourced material and employs local masons and engineers. It trains them in the process of implementing its projects. Skill development is important part of life. It is not like that we may think that yes, if they will not do the job of manual scavenging, what will be their future. Keeping in mind the necessity of that, Sulab is doing five step work for motivating the manual scavengers or for preparing their life in a better way. First, they do that liberation. Of course, those who are considered as untouchables, those who are considered as yes, you have to do the that manual scavenging. So, liberation is important part of that. So, they should first be liberated. Then of course, rehabilitation is important part of that. After uh, that, Sulav is doing the rehabilitation work for those needy people. Then vocational training is given to these women and men also. Vocational training is most important part because a after getting vocational training, one is able to do the job, one is able to start any startups, one can do anything after getting vocational training. After that, the education for the children of the needy people, that is another part that well, if they have been rehabilitated, they are liberated, what will be the future of their children? So, Sulab is also doing job for educating their children and of course, Finally, social elevation. After doing all these things, Sulab is promoting that yes, they should be socially elevated. Unless until we elevate their lives, how can we think of that yes, we are doing wonderful job. So, with these things, Sulab is trying its best. At the same time, for spreading the message related to manual scavenging, related to untouchability, related to use of water and toilet for stopping authentication and number of other things, Sulab regularly publishes its magazine, Sulab Swach Bharat is its newspaper and Sulab India is its magazine. Sulab India magazine and Sulab Swach Bharat is weekly newspaper through these Sulab is trying as its best to spread different messages for the society so that they can easily understand the reality. Other than that, Sulab is having its sub branch called Sulab International Center for Action Sociology, which was started in 1993, and Sulab International Institute of Health Hygiene, which was established in 1994. Other than that, Padmusan Bindasar Pathak wrote a number of books related to sanitation, related to open defecation, related to upliftment of the society because he is motivated by Gandhian philosophy. So, through number of books, he tried his best to spread the message so that everyone can understand the need of the hour and through his action, he proved that yes, toilet can be an agent of social change. because sanitation needs a total upliftment of the society. It needs societal change and for that, Sulab is doing wonderful job. Dear friends, as we all know that actions have a habit of speaking louder than words. So, of course, we are also supposed to learn that we should do something for the betterment of the society. We are supposed to do something unless until we do for the society, how can we think that well, I am relaxed. It is our moral responsibility to create awareness in the society. It is not only job of particular agency or particular individual, but we should also take active part in that. Creating awareness and as we are discussing that it is also part of our system. It is also a part of our system. So, dear learners, we are also supposed to understand that yes, 
it should remain be there. And sociology of sanitation, if we go by the journey of sociology of sanitation, it is just one of the important contributions made by Sulav. In 2013, as we start the, the discussed in initial lectures also, National Conference on Sociology of Sanitation, Environmental Sanitation, Public Health and Social Deprivation was organized by Sulab International in collaboration with Sulab International Center for Action Sociology during 28-29 January 2013 in New Delhi. This was just the beginning of starting sociology of sanitation and in that number of sociologists from different parts of India and the world, they participated and they ponder over the issues related to sociology of sanitation. They thought that yes, it should be taught, it should be promoted in Indian society and each and every individual should learn what are the benefits of sociology of sanitation because it is not simply related to cleanliness or the toilet but number of other things are those factors are there in the periphery of sanitation and all these issues should necessarily be touched upon. After that conference, Sulav International Social Service Organization in association with Sulav International Center for Action Sociology organized a workshop during June 13, 14, 2013 to prepare the syllabus on sociology of sanitation and write books on sociology of sanitation. And as a result of this workshop, number of books have been written by different sociologists and at the same time in more than 20 central universities and state universities, the course on sociology of sanitation is being taught as a core course, as an elective course, as a vocational course. So, this workshop was very fruitful. After that, a national seminar on sociology of sanitation was jointly organized by M. K. Bhavnagar University, Gujarat University, Ahmedabad and Sulav International Center for Action Sociology, New Delhi during June 25th to 27th, 2018. After that, a national webinar on sociology of sanitation was organized by the Department of Sociological Studies, Central University of South Bihar, Gaya on 27th October 2021 and a national seminar was organized on sociology of sanitation, introspection and retro retrospection organized by Sulav International Social Service Organization in New Delhi on March 5 to 6, 2022. Of course, dear learners, Sulav has published more than 10 textbooks on sociology of sanitation. Dear learners, Sulav is contributing a lot in the development of sanitation through its different aspects. It means that we are supposed to understand that yes, Sulav is also doing if we understand the real intention of the lecture like sociology of sanitation. We are supposed to understand that what should be our role in promoting sanit sanitation in the society. If we create that atmosphere in the society so that anyone can easily learn and that is why I have tried to make this course very practical in the way because I know there is difference between learning how to get a fish and how to catch a fish. Dear learners, I tried my best to tell you how to catch a fish because if you learn how to catch a fish, it will remain forever throughout your life. Wherever you go, you will spread the message related to sanitation you will imbibe that culture, you will develop your personality with all those sanitation sensitive behavioral aspects so that others may feel that yes, if he or she can do anything, I can also. With these objectives, you are supposed to understand that yes, sociology of sanitation is useful. It is not like, like that, that Sulav International is doing wonderful job. Of course, it is a matter of praise, but at the same time, we should learn something. Unless until we learn something, how can we say that yes, I am also making my own contribution. Dear learners, I am reminded of W. B. Yeats when he says that education is not a filling of a pail, but a lighting of a fire. In the same way, 
the purpose of my lecture is to ignite in the learners the dedication towards sanitation, the proper atmosphere towards learning and spreading the message towards sanitation. Only then I will consider that that purpose is achieved. So, dear learners, you should also think upon the issues that well, these are the different jobs being done by Sulab or any other agency. What should be done by me? You are supposed to, no one can be expert of each and every field you are supposed to try that yes, I can do better in that particular field. Dear learners, this course is all about you. You are the raison d'etre of this course. The sole purpose of this course is to make you aware, so that you can spread the message in the society. This is we have just discussed the example of Sulab sanitation movement. We can understand that if one organization can do wonder in the world, not only at India level, but abroad also. If we all will start thinking that yes, we can also make active participation in sanitation movement. Dear learners, this is movement. It is not like that, it is job of overnight. If you keep on thinking that yes, I will also do that. What are those lessons which have been learned by us? I am supposed to use all those things. It is not like that I have learned something about manual scavengers, but tomorrow onwards I will start behaving in the same way. Of course not. If you have learned that yes, it is a matter of pride for all the Indian, all the members of the society to give equal opportunity to all its members. We should do that. We should not allow any individual to remain sidelined from the main stream. If we think that yes, number of individuals are there, they need my special attention. If you change the lives of others, just imagine if a toilet can be an agent of social change, your other action can also be. Because while understanding the importance of sanitation, dear learners, you should understand that it is not simply related to toilet facility or open defecation. At the same time, it is closely related to other aspects like gender, like caste, like skill building, like clear cut discrimination prevalent in the society. So, if we have to think that yes, despite the fact that manual scavenging is banned in India, despite the fact that as per law, gender equality should be there. but do we really practice that? Do we see that it is happening in the society? If not, it is our responsibility to just think of that well, if any group of members in our society, if they are practicing any bad things or if we think that yes, we can take lessons from historical facts, certain things are there, how do we use to stay closer to environment? Isn't it possible even today to develop that? We can protect the environment, we can think of healthy lifestyle, we can think of protecting other individuals life also. If we start doing that, then dear learners, we will be able to achieve that. So, this Sulab sanitation movement is part of one aspect of this course. The ultimate aim of this course is to let you know through all these examples, all the wonderful job done by the Sulab International and its father, Bindeswar Patharji, our purpose is to let you know that well, we can also do a number of things. A skill building is part and parcel of that. At the same time, if we provide ample opportunity to girls children in the school, at the same time, if we uplift the situation of women, if we elevate the social situation of any individual, we can think that yes, it is also required and for that, we can think of making change at our level. It is not necessary that every time we should join our hands with the big group of available in the nearby areas. Of course not, you can do it alone because ultimately, if we all at our level start thinking that yes, it is me. I can do that. Simple thing is that you are supposed to convert your can I do attitude to I can do attitude. So, yes dear learners, you should think that yes, I can do it. Why not? 
if others are doing, if others can change their lives, then why not me? Number of individuals, they are waiting for your hands, they are waiting for your help. If you think that, yes, I should help them, necessary you should come forward, because number of individuals are working, number of individuals are doing their job. If all the members of the society will start thinking in the same direction, that yes, environment is necessary, sanitation is necessary, not simply for achieving the target of sustainable development goal, not only for achieving the target defined by different number of programs and policies of government of India or any state governments, but it is my society, it is the dignity of the members of the society is associated to us. If we all th start thinking that yes, sanitation is not simply related to toilet, but a number of other things are equally associated to that. We cannot think of open defecation unless until we provide ample opportunity to the class of particular women, to the class of particular caste group, those who are considered as manual scavengers. If we say that, yes, manual scavenging is bad, you should not do that unless until we provide them alternatives. How will they stop doing that job? how will they earn money, what will we, they do. So, at the same time, unless until we provide them alternative arrangement related to that type of toilet that is already there available in the society. So, dear learners, it is very easy to tell or to suggest anyone stop doing that, do not do that, but it is our moral responsibility to let them know the alternative arrangements, if they will not do that whether it is very easy to tell that, well, we follow gender equality or women should enjoy equal status in the society. But at the same time, if we are unable to provide them equal opportunity, how can we say that, yes, we are giving them, unless until we train them, unless until we provide proper facilities of sanitation, proper privacy for them, how can we say that they will contribute in the society? Dear learners, you are supposed to understand the fact that we cannot do anything unless until we get the benefit of all the members of the society, all the members, those who belong to different caste, those who belong to different gender, those who belong to different other ethnic and religious groups, because a number of things are there which they can contribute. If we ignore their lives, how can we? At the same time, if we are physically fit, we are supposed to do a lots of job without considering that, well, this is not my job, whether I belong to particular gender or I belong to particular caste. Number of facts are there, number of different information provided by different agencies clearly see that despite the fact that we know the reality, but while doing action, we are totally ignorant of the fact. And for that, we discussed number of data related to it, whether for example, even if we know that women are there in the household, they are involved in number of other jobs doing throughout day and night. But if it is matter of carrying or bringing water from outside, as we discussed with the data that even today, 80 percent women, those who are above age of 15, 80 percent women bring the water for household as per the data provided by NFHS fourth round compared to just 16 percent male members. Dear learners, you can easily understand that if 80 percent women are bringing water compared to just 16 percent of their counterpart male member, why can't we share the burden with women? They are also part and parcel of our life. If we think that we should get the equal opportunity, they are also entitled. The same way based on the caste, we do know the importance of Jajmani system. If at certain area still that Jajmani system is going on, we should understand that manual scavenging should immediately be stopped. They are there, we can work, we can promote them, we can promote the particular caste those who are considered as untouchable, they can do a number of other things after getting proper training, after getting proper motivating and above all, they need our empathetic understanding, 
unless until we try to understand what are their real problem, unless until we will try to understand if they face any problem, the particular type of feeling they are facing that we are supposed to understand at we have been telling by the forefathers that Atmavat Sharva Bhute issue. We should understand that well, if they are feeling that type of problem, we should imagine that if I were there, what would be the situation. So, if we try to understand that well, particular caste member, they are doing the job which I will not perhaps do, then I will also not try to tell them that yes, do that job. At the same time, just imagine if women, they are part and parcel of our life, if 50 percent population is doing the job which they are not supposed to or if we try to develop that habit that yes, we should also help our counterparts. If men and women, they will work together, if the members of different caste will come together to fight against the sanitation and they all will think that yes, we can do a number of things in the society, we can make the changes in the society, then anything can be achieved. Of course, the purpose of this course on sociology of sanitation to let you know different aspects of sociology of sanitation. That is why dear learner, this is the last lecture in the series of sociology of sanitation. During 10 lectures, we have focused upon various issues so that you can learn that well, if we concentrate on these various issues, we can understand the real issues related to sanitation and environment. As we started our lecture with the development of sociology of sanitation, its emergence and other related things, in the second lecture, we concentrated on historical aspects of sanitation. Number of good things are already there in our historical aspects number of traditions, culture, beliefs that we follow that is already there in our society. Simple thing is that we have to learn something, we have to sustain all those ideas, norms and patterns so that we can lead healthy life. Then we discussed about caste and sanitation, how is caste closely related to sanitation and that we discussed today also the manual scavenging and caste. Then we discussed about gender and sanitation, gendered form of sanitation, how is sanitation important for both male and female, but gender issue plays important role in sanitation. Sanitation is more important for women compared to men because of the socio-cultural factors and because of the anatomical structure of women. Then we discussed something about the environmental aspect and sanitation how sanitation and environment, these two are closely associated. After that, we concentrated on discussing sanitation at international level. What is the situation of sanitation? What is the data provided by World Health Organization? What are those things which we are supposed to know that well, this is the situation of sanitation at international level. Then we discussed upon something related to different policies and programs running in India. What are those policies and programs? What are the benefits? What are the objectives and aims of these programs? What are the mission? And how can we achieve the targets fixed by different programs running in Indian society? So, with total of and today we are discussing the contribution of the Sulab sanitation movement. So, with the help of these lectures, dear learners, we try to understand the ground reality of sanitation at the same time, how can sociology of sanitation can play important role in spreading the message related to sanitation, stopping the opendification and creating awareness in the minds of individual. So, that we can say that yes, we in Indian society are promoting sanitation related behavior. We are inculcating in children the proper behavior so that they can easily learn how to behave in a proper way. So, dear learners, it is most important fact that you are doing this course on sociology of sanitation. I hope you might have find all the lectures quite informative, educative and interesting. 
and above all most important fact is that you are supposed to practice it you are supposed to spread the message related to it only then the purpose of the sociology of sanitation will be achieved and so far as discussing this lecture on sociology soul of sanitation movement is concerned i have taken help from the sites of sulav international organization and let me acknowledge with gratitude the personal interaction with dr bindeswar pathak and my academic engagements with bindeswar pathak was also part of my preparing this lecture so credit goes to bindeswar pathak interaction during different period at the same time i have taken help from these study materials also and you can get help from the sanitation regarding issues displayed on sulav international sites and you will find in these books different materials mohammad akram's sociology of sanitation b k nagla's sociology of sanitation richard pais action sociology contribution of dr bindeswar pathak richard pais's another book sociology of sanitation bindeswar pathak's edited book sociology of sanitation environmental sanitation public health and social deprivation ashish saxena's book sociology of sanitation anil waghela's book sociology of sanitation and of course the websites of sulav international dear learners as we all know that the course is there related to sociology of sanitation but number of things have been done to ameliorate the situation in the society but as robert frost would say miles to go before i sleep same thing is there in sanitation field also number of works have been done number of things have been there but you are supposed to do particular thing finally a last note to all the viewers you must be the change you wish to see in the world rightly said by mahatma gandhi thank you Hello, I am Shikha Dixit. I teach psychology, and I am with the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at IIT Kanpur. Today, I am going to talk about what is social cognition. Social cognition is a research area in psychology, which explicates the various cognitive processes that people employ to understand the social world. So, essentially, it is about sense making of the social world which involves understanding other people as well as understanding oneself understanding others requires understanding their traits their internal tendencies their contextual aspects motives feelings emotions etc so as we can see uh, this is a very complex process and requires a massive amount of information processing even for small decisions for simple decisions people have to process a large amount of information the main uh, perspective or the approach which is used in social cognition is obviously the cognitive approach and which is the study of mental structures and processes the main paradigm which is used is the information processing paradigm as far as the range of topics in social con uh, cognition is concerned the range is very wide from individual level sense making to collective sense making as far as views of cognitive sense making are concerned there are three major dominant views in social cognition the naive scientist view the cognitive miser view and the motivated tactician view 
The naive scientist view emerged from research done in causal attribution and this refers to detailed and systematic processing of information and sense making in the social world. 